Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Stellaris Apocalypse in our High Dominion series. So, uh, last episode, uh, which was several days ago recorded for me, ended with a little bit of frustration. I'm going to try and head some of that frustration off by immediately working on some defenses, which are not going to be up in time, but I'm still going to do it. <laughs> this is the Coggin system, and uh, I haven't been really building up a ton of defense platforms yet, but I'm going to change that starting now. And I think that's part of the reason I mentioned early in the, in the series that, you know, when I was playing my first offline apocalypse series, kind of playing around before the embargo was lifted and we could show you content, is I I noticed I had an energy surplus. And then I started to realize um, with more offline play and in this series, you know, maybe the reason I had the the energy surplus is that I wasn't quite doing everything that I was intended to be doing with my star bases, which of course are a, com are a completely new, excuse me, um, aspect of gameplay. And I'm still figuring this, this, you know, like the, the nuance of the system out. So definitely the defense platforms are something that I've been shirking and I want to fix that uh, starting now. So we currently have um, star ports elsewhere in our territory that are designed to defend us against actual... Um, <laughs> Uh, hostile empires as opposed to marauders, whereas the marauders in this tiny little sliver of space up here are the ones that are actually pissing me off. So, um, I've got the Citrinia system here, which they came for before. As soon as I have the money to do some defense platforms, I will do that there. Let me check the defense platform blueprint really quickly to make sure that it's up to snuff. We got some, we have uh, auxiliary fire control, and it looks like everything up to date. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, let's roll with that. And we also... It looks like there are some upgrades in order. Which one specifically? Is it just the fortress upgrade upgrades on all these worlds? It's got to be more than that. No, it is just the fortress upgrades. There are a number of fortresses. Well, I guess there's a few. I love these upgrade indicators, by the way. It's so amazing that you can just look at your outliner now and glance and just know like what you need to be doing. All right, so... This guy is going over to build that... Um, Starbase and Ubleon. We're gonna get them get him the hell out of the way of the Marauders while they're on their way in. And the Coggin system, of course, I'll go to speed two, I guess. But the construction of the Coggin Starbase, of course, will take uh longer than it takes for the Marauders to get to it. So not gonna be the prettiest thing. The sensor profile of a mid-sized vessel was briefly detected inside the upper upper atmosphere of this gas giant. Well then take a look. Now, did you get the hell out yet? Or Oh, yeah, that's right. We had pirates show up at the same time, too. And that's fun. All right, so I have this secondary fleet, <laughs> which was cordially pointed out to me by a viewer, and that's totally a good point. We do have two fleets. I may as well go ahead and send them One to take care of the pirates. I'm still System thoroughly annoyed complete. at the timing of this pirate menace. Special product complete. The team under Science Officer Sebakir has finished their expedition on Oaprinda 3A and returned to ATS Goom the Merciful. Thankfully, the Starship Graveyard on the surface proved to be a technological treasure trove. Studying the remains of these vessels has advanced our research in certain fields by several years, and there are yet things to discover. A permanent science outpost in orbit would be a great boon to our Starship engineering efforts. Where's that? Oaprinda, not too far away. I, I wanted to try and get these worlds before anyone else does, and we may yet be able to do it, so... We'll see how that goes. This uh, uh, construction ship is on the way to Oublion right now. So I'm just wondering why these Reavers aren't leaving yet. They said they were raiding my territory, but I don't see them. So may is under maybe they decided to bugger off. If they decided to bugger off, I'm going to be a very happy Hadrian. Active scans of Sidar 3 have picked up what appears to be a large ship deep inside the atmosphere of the gas giant. Judging by the nearby debris, there have been several failed attempts to salvage this derelict in the past. Any ship strong enough to withstand such crushing gravity must be a magnificent prize. And science officer Jafala has promised a salvage project, uh, has proposed a salvage project of our own. Bring it up. Log Whatever it is. Probably a cruiser. One of our research stations has been lost. Yeah, probably to pirates, I would imagine. Yep two pirates. But our defense fleet has arrived. We're gonna wipe the floor with them. I guess I sent, uh... Oh, I sent Rapalkin's Armada last episode, didn't I? My bad. Alright, so let's go ahead tell you what, you return to base. Um, and as a matter of fact, hang on. Right now, why don't I set Coggin as your home station? Why not do that? Uh, can I, can I do that? No, it has to be a bastion. So... I'm just going to put that fleet there manually. 
Meanwhile, we are going to wipe the floor. I completely forgot I sent these guys, but we are going to... They've been heading there the entire episode. I've been talking about other things. But anyway, if this episode comes out a little bit late today, I apologize. It's because I've been having fun playing this offline. Um, I'm playing around with some, you know, different kind of galaxy settings. Complete. And uh, playing around with the Roman Star Empire, playing around with um, the Oranathi, who you guys haven't seen yet. But uh, they're a uh, race that I designed a little while ago. A couple of different versions of them, in fact. You might have seen if you took a very close look at my race selection, species selection at the very beginning of this playthrough. But, um, okay. Goom the Merciful Screw, where they found nothing of interest. Yay. Less distractions for me. Kill the frickin' pirates. Die. Die in a fire, you bastards. Alright, so that's that. Let's now go ahead and we're gonna build a starbase in Farragon, so that is no longer ever, 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 ever a problem. And then you are... Yeah, you're gonna build a starbase there. And you need to build a starbase here, but we don't quite have the influence yet. But we'll have it soon. So I feel like the, the Marauders might have buggered off. And that might have had something to do with the 2.0.1 patch that I loaded up in between um, the previous playthrough and this recording, because I did add... Oh, nice. Upgrade. Let's go ahead and get those upgrades taken care of. I did add that patch. I downloaded that patch today. And if you, if you haven't checked out the patch notes for that, that did come out just today, and I encourage you to do so. Some nice, um, minor, but uh, for some of us, major fixes, especially multiplayer-related fixes. So, in a masterful display of engineering, the team under Science Officer Jafaba 3 has, or Jafaba has managed to gently raise the derelict ship on Cider 3 to the gas giant's upper atmosphere. Despite its age, the ancient cruiser is in remarkably good condition. Good. So we have a cruiser. Again. So, I can go ahead and... Complete. Okay, so you're currently upgrading. Stop upgrading so I can merge you. And then we'll give a new upgrade order in a bit, I guess. I guess I can give the upgrade now. Okay. By chance, we stumbled upon a faint alien signal. Yep. Research. I can start reading those less and less now. We've seen most of them, I think. Let's go ahead and research that. We have encountered some form of alien vessels in the Sysmax system. Ah, crystalline entities. Have we not encountered crystalline entities already? Really? It's 2282, and we're just meeting crystalline entities. Okay. Also, I really need to add Cybrix Alpha to my territory. I know. It's a problem. So, uh, yeah, let's issue a remote project. Let's study them that way. And uh, let's get a Starbase queued up at Cybrix Alpha next. At Cybrix Alpha. Uh, for those of you concerned about Cybrix Alpha spawning pirates, I really don't think it will, because it's a special system. I don't know. My hunch is that it won't. Why is that red, though? Special product. The Crystalline Entities, the name itself a compromise between rival factions of Xenobiologists and Xenogeologists on, Zen on Sindar Prime, are probably alive. An earlier and perhaps more descriptive name for them was Silicate Animate Matter, as they have little in common with biological life. They are solitary beings, each individual crystal sovereign, rarely seen with more than a sentinel and a smaller cohort entity. Aside from the cohort and a sentinel clearly being subservient to the sovereign of the group, the subtle nuances of the crystalline entity's socio-hierarchical relationships are lost on us. The entities do not seem to mate, and we have yet to observe any crystals that are recognizably older or younger than others. Contrary to an early hypothesis, the shifts in hue between individual crystalline entities seem to be related not to their age, but to their latent internal charge, which can be violently unleashed, and it appears as if though as if those sporadic fluctuations in this charge alter the refractive properties of the crystal. We'll find some use for that. Specifically, the ability to detect everything in a system instantly the moment we arrive, which is a pretty handy-dandy ability. Alright, so, waiting for influence. Oh wait, what are we doing? Oh no! No! I just lost my cruiser because you flew straight- Why would you do that? My new cruiser flew straight into the Marauder home system. Why would you do that? Why in the hell? <laughs> he just straight up flew straight into Farathon. Why? Oh, okay, fine. Screw you too, buddy. That pisses me off. God. I, I just, I, I have no words when, when that nonsense happens. All right, so let's go ahead. We, we do need to build, build up some defenses, like I was saying. Um... Also, I want to check my policies again, because there's something I did in the previous episode, or the one before that, and I 
had a bit of a mental derp because I got distracted by uh, war doctrines, I think. I want to go back and look for something colonization related. X-ray lasers are tempting. Energy nexus is also tempting. We're okay on energy, though, so let's do that. Also, while I'm thinking about it, I'll go back to policies in just a second. Let's look at Mudagon Merchant Guild. Let's end the resource trade deal. Yeah, see, we were trading a good bit of energy there. Are we doing one with anyone else? The Riggin. And resource trade deal. Yeah, see, I, I can probably re-up some of these in a second. All right, let's end these. Now, you already have a Zerocorp trade deal. That's fine. Can I go ahead and... We can recruit one of their scientists, which I might... Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. Could we recruit one of your sci... Oh, oh, mother of God. Never mind. Not doing that. That is 5,000 credits, and we do not have that. But I can commission an art piece for 3,000, which I really don't want to spend, because that's most of my energy. So I'm not going to spend it right now. But I do want to go back, and we're going to take a look at each of the three... It looks like we have a pretty good relationship with all of them. Let's go ahead and do this. Governing ethics attraction boost would be a good thing. And we don't have any rig and spice right now. Let's fix that. Okay. Uh, we would like to trade four energy credits. And we want... Uh, I don't know if I want to give up 100, but maybe 50? Yeah, let's do that. Maybe 50. Have been upgraded. And I may go back to one of the other ones and do the smallest possible... Yeah, let's do that. Let's let's do the smallest possible trade deal with, like, Zuracorp. We're going to trade for energy credits. There. Okay. That's not perfect, but it's a little better. I really wish we weren't transmuting any of that right now, but until we have better energy income, more self-sustaining energy income, I don't think we have much of a choice. Gotta do some upgrade. Oh, wow. I have to do a number of upgrades on Araya. That's good to know. Right, we're still in speed two, and I'm going to keep it here. Coggin is in need of some defenses, because this is going to be our frontline defense against future raids. So we could do an anchorage, so we have better naval capacity, which is very tempting, but uh, not in Coggin. Um, I'm probably going to do anchorages elsewhere. I already have some at Absaja Mean, if I'm not mistaken. I need to get in the habit of doing this. I could just click that button and it makes it much easier. Now we got four anchorages at Absaja Mean, which is lovely. But we've got our traders there. Those are helping a little bit. There's definitely more that I can do. An anchorage there. I kind of want to have like a brewery. I want to have a, a station out of the way. What are you? Just a just pirate debris, I guess. We have this anomaly here. Let's research that with whoever. Maybe Sinistra would be a good idea. Just have a out of the way anchorage way back here to help boost naval capacity. And then we'll work on Coggin at the same time because we have to get our, our naval capacity back we have to get that fixed, because that's part of what's driving our energy down. So, oh man, really? Just three more minerals. Hang on. System survey complete. Let's go to speed three. Go. All right, so this is going to be System an anchorage, and we'll, we'll build that up slowly but surely. Make it even better. Zeno mongrels have declared war on each other. Great. Pakari Empire declared war on the Themlar Throng. All right, so these two are at war now. Very Roman colors here. I like it. Let's see... We do need energy. So I can go ahead and focus. Yeah, see, I don't want to spend too much. I'm waiting for minerals. For, um... Various other... Platforms. There's just so much I need to spend minerals on right now. System but... survey complete. Construction complete. This is the main one. I think I'm going to just sit here and wait for this to finish. We're on speed three. We're going to plow through this, and although all the while we're building up minerals, scientist Sebakir has developed new skills. He's got the Voidcraft ability. We're Anomaly currently... Fire. Our Voidcraft tech is already matched with the Voidcraft engineer, though. By chance, we stumbled upon a faint alien signal. All right. Research that faint alien signal for me, please. See, I want to spend minerals, but I've got to... 
Let's focus on this for a second. Okay, policies. One thing I can do while this is running. Construction complete. System look at this. Survey complete. Okay, never mind. Can't do anything while it's running. Too much pop-up. All right, the sensor profile of a mid-sized vessel was... Okay, research. Maybe that's another cruiser that won't freaking fly into Reaper territory, Raider territory, whatever territory this time. So, war philosophy is unrestricted. War doctrine... Let's see. Yeah, I don't see anything here. I was checking to see if there might be something... I like the idea of improving growth speed a bit. Let's do that. I was checking to see if there might be something... ...that, um... System survey complete. ...that allows us to colonize with robots. But what people have been saying in the comments, and I generally... I'm on board with this because I haven't played with robots that much outside of my actual synthetic series, which is completely different because it's a robot species. But you need droids in order to colonize, which makes perfect sense. I know that. I haven't done it a lot, so I forgot. But, you know, in, of course, Cooperate or Die, you can colonize with all the things because you are a robot race, and that's what was throwing me off. So, uh, let's bring it up, and this will... Yeah, we can recover our cruiser this way. Well, nothing will ever get that cruiser back, but you know what I mean. We can make up for the fact that we lost that one. Okay, so... Coggin Station. We need Sinistra... first. Sinistra is our... Anchorage. Let's do a couple of those. And we might be able to do something else there. Uh, Naval Logistics Office, once we... research it, which we're not researching at the moment, but we will soon, will help fix some of the problem as well. Now, the Coggin Station is the other one that I need to upgrade. So this one, however, I just want to have... Let's do a missile and a gun battery to start. Followed by a target uplink computer so the weapons have a wider range. And we will upgrade this thing and give it some fighters. Basically, we just want this thing to be able to hold more of its own. We will eventually upgrade it to where it's ridiculous. Really? You're going to insult me from across the freaking galactic center? Shut up, them Throng. I don't care what you think. So now that I've kind of got my head on straight, when it, and I still need to build some defense platforms for sure as well. But now that I've got my head on straight with regard to building up these defenses... Um, I want to try and eliminate these guys as a problem, and hopefully, I, I would like to actually attack them. Um, I, I kind of like the idea of that being the first um, kind of major war target, given what they've done. Um, I'm pretty sure the Krithokan Imperium was responsible for paying them, so we're going to have to deal with the Krithokans at some point as well. i tell you what, let's go ahead and do this while I'm looking at it. If I upgrade this... I'd rather upgrade buildings that are more consequential to me at the moment. Like a farm. And all of these. Good lord. Okay, there go most of my resources. Special product complete. Okay, now... For God's sake... Oh, wow. Look over here. Holy crap. This is on the other side of this fallen empire. So, yeah, we, we need to pretty much colonize, like, this entire section of the galaxy. I think the Kazam Protectors would let us. We just need to not colonize their holy worlds, like Emerald Mausoleum and Walled Garden. Everywhere else might be okay. Alright, so here comes these guys again. We would like... Oh, of course we don't have enough money. No, we're not interested in extending System our research deal. Complete. Because we just spent money on edicts. I'll come back to it. I love, 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 love that they finally have that notification added in, though. That is fan freaking tastic Okay, every vassal increases your naval capacity. Nah, our unity output is increased. None of these are important because I don't actually have any subjects yet. I might eventually, but right now I don't. And that's fine. Not a particular focus of mine at present. Of course, because we brought that ship up, we are further over our naval capacity. Which is more than a little annoying, but we'll make do. Let's go ahead and queue up a basic science lab there. And we, oh, need to unpause for sure. I have already been playing for 20 minutes. This game is way too much fun. Construction complete. I have to say, one thing that I'm finding so far in playing both for this series, what do we have here? The Krithokan Imperium laid claim to the Atlas system. Bring it on, dudes. Anomaly. Um, 
One thing that I'm saying, one thing I'm, one thing that I'm seeing in my playthroughs, both in this series and playing offline, is that the changes they brought in 2.0 and uh, in Apocalypse definitely have slowed the game down. And that is like a dirty word, right? You, you hear those words and you think, oh, that's clearly a bad thing. Actually, no, it's not. Um, Stellaris, I used to be able to get through a good amount of a Stellaris playthrough in like an afternoon. And Stellaris is not Civilization, guys. Like, it was never supposed to be. This is a paradox strategy title. And once you get to the late game, it's kind of grand strategy. It's, it's pretty intense and there's a lot of moving parts. And it's meant to be a multiple sitting type of affair. And, um... I like the fact, so far, I know not everyone's going to agree, but I, my impression is that these changes have kind of spaced the game out a bit, and it's harder to get too far in one sitting because you are, you have more to manage, things have slowed down a little bit, it takes longer for fleets to get places, um, you have to be a little bit more deliberate, you have to be a lot more deliberate. I said that a lot in my Apocalypse coverage uh, before the game came out, and by the way, thank you to all of you who are here because of that and I hope you're enjoying the series so far because I know a lot of people hopped on board when they see the coverage they haven't necessarily seen a new series of me playing so I hope you're enjoying yourselves but um but yeah I, I so far I like it I have to say um those of you who have known me for a while um I tend to be pretty optimistic and open-minded on um on game development you have to really really screw something up badly to make me uh, even a little bit mad at you because I know how hard these people work and I appreciate it and um, I try to give things the benefit of the doubt when I don't like a change that's just an attitudinal choice I'm not saying everyone should be that way I think uh, the the culture around the change right now is a little bit uh let's scrap it for minerals we could really use those minerals now we can upgrade our stuff um the culture around the change right now is a little bit um there's, there's, there's some anger, there's some frustration, and uh, my hope is that people will kind of, you know, give it a chance and that the post-release patches will clarify some things and maybe respond to some feedback and make things even better, but um, I'm hoping folks that are, are frustrated from a reasonable perspective, because there's always people who are going to be frustrated no matter what, right? And I'm not even talking to those people, I have nothing to say to those people. If you're just angry because you want to be angry, fine, go do your thing, don't talk to me. But... If you're angry because you genuinely think that the game is messed up and you 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 hope that they'll fix it or or make some change, um, I think that they will respond to feedback going forward. We'll have to see, you know, how that goes. All right, let's go ahead and get the naval logistics office built there in Sinistra. Uh, but yeah, it's it's um, I'm 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 liking what I'm seeing overall, both in this series and otherwise. I hope you guys are too. By the way, I, I know a lot of people are having fun with it. I hope that's the general consensus uh, across the board. Seems to be, when you look at reviews. There's a slight bias in favor of, this is cool. And of course, there's a wave of frustration, which is to be expected. And I think they did expect that. Let's go ahead and queue those up. We still need to survey that system, weirdly. Um, system survey complete. Hang on, where's my nearest science ship? All the way over there? No. Hang on, there's... There you are. You're actually really... Oh, you're... Okay, that's easy. I can manage that. Let's control shift click that. And get that taken care of right now. Because there's no reason that system shouldn't be surveyed. Uh, yeah, sure. We can go ahead and renew our deal with them. We briefly detected some unusual energy readings emanating from this planet. Might be a glitch in our system. Is that the Doth knock again? I thought we already had the Doth knock. Maybe because we ignored them as giving it back to us. Okay, we have Cybrix Alpha. Now, let's find out... Oh, no. Seriously? I'm about to cuss. Never mind. Maybe you're going to be my first target. Forget the frickin' marauders. I cannot wait to reach endgame strength just to wipe you off the face of the goddamn planet. You see what's happening right now? We have, we have activated compliance protocols. Refrain from all aggressive acts of war. Did you listen, Next Continuum, when I read the species description at the beginning of the series? Were you here? Clearly you weren't. We're supposed to be declaring, like, I was just building up to that point. Now we're going to wait 20 years of the Next Continuum. I'm going to wipe my freaking... <sighs> this is a good episode, too. I enjoyed this episode. And then the game just found a way to say, ha 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 ha, screw you, Adrian, right at the end of it. Oh my god. 
That is maddening. And I mean, I guess I could have headed it off by, you know, making them less unhappy with me, but I genuinely tried. I was trying to colonize Merga. I couldn't. Um, I'm not, it's not really good enough for me to colonize. So, and now I can't wipe these guys off the face of the planet, even though I really want to, so we're going to have to wait on, on that. Actually, speaking of that, hang on. Let's go ahead and switch to aggressive observation because we can. <laughs> um, but we can't nuke them to the Stone Age now because we have to wait for 20 years. Hang on. So we need to wait 20 years from this day. Just making a note. The other really, really crappy thing about that is that that's going to be after 2300. And if it's after 2300, what that means is that that will be at the mid-game point. A great con might emerge. We might have to fight. So if we have to fight and then these guys come after me, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not even going to think about that. It makes me so mad. Um, I'm, I'm just going to I'm just gonna keep doing my thing. Uh, let's let's see what else can I do. Um, I mean, I do want to I do want to upgrade these fortresses. It's not like I'm trying to avoid it. Um, all right. Well, we're 26 minutes into the episode, and I need to get this one encoding and uploading uh, because right now it is 3:16 p.m. and you guys are going to be watching this at four. So um, that's that's a little bit uh, frustrating, but it is what it is, and we'll um, I'll make do with it. I st I do have to spend a good amount of time still, you know, really getting my defenses set up. And, and being the turtle race that, uh, that there's another component. We are a warlike enslaving race, but we're also kind of turtles. You know, we're going to, we need our galactic mountains built up, right? That's what the High Dominion of Sindar is about to a certain extent. We need the Dominion established. And right now the, the peaks are not as high as they can be. Let's put it that way. And the valleys are not as rich as they can be. So uh, if you, those are, go back and listen to the species description if you don't, if you're not catching my metaphors. But um, anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes are coming out every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time, and hopefully this one will too. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think. I'm going to kill him. I'll see you next time.